say thank you to all that drove by Lois's house to wish her happy birthday and cards and balloons and gifts. Thank you so much. It meant the world to her. And pretty much every night I sit with her and I read the card or she reads the card over and over. We have a little staff that will so thank you so much. I appreciate it. And so does she. Thank you, Jamie. Maybe we'll make it to be 100. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today we light the candle of peace. And we are reminded of the journey that Mary and Joseph undertook to go to Bethlehem. Luke 3, 4 through 6 says, It is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Let's pray. God of timeless grace, you fill us with joyful expectation. Make us ready for the message that prepares the way, that with uprightness of heart and holy joy, we may eagerly await the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 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 Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, will be a living sanctuary for you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, will be a living sanctuary for you. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Give me oil in my lamp, I pray. Give me oil in my lamp, keep me burning. Keep me burning till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Give me hope in my life, keep me praying. Give me hope in my life, I pray. Give me hope in my life, keep me praying, keep me praying till the break of day. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King of Kings. Sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna, sing Hosanna to the King. Don't be cast down, uh -uh, don't be discouraged. We will be trying along the way. Don't let the burdens overcome you. We know the Lord will make a way. Lift up your hands, rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice, let praises ring. Lay down those burdens that you carry. Lift up your eyes and see the King. The mountains high. Our tried, we're trusting Jesus. We can by faith face anything. Lift up your hands, rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice, let praises ring. 
Lay down the burdens that you carry. Lift up your eyes and see the king. Praise is the key to overcoming. The spirit comes, I'll make the praise. Worship the Lord and sing hallelujah. We're growing stronger every day. Lift up your hands, rejoice in Jesus. Lift up your voice and praise his reign. Down the burdens that you carry, lift up your eyes and see the king. Oh Lord, we're in your care. Oh Lord, we're in your care. Your loving arms around us, people cannot harm us. Oh Lord, we're in your care. All night long, we're in his care. All day long. In his care, his loving arms around us, he will then arm us. Oh, we're in your care. If we are sick, we're in his care. If we are hurt, we're in his care. His loving arms around us, he will then arm us. Oh, we're in your care. Oh, Lord, we're in your care. God's care this morning. It's going to be right here, right now. I don't know. There's Jiggy. Clark Perry. Praise God. Bob Johnson. Here. Amelia Johnson. Bob Hill. Alistair Boyhill. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> He's sleeping. Pay attention to my laces are untied. <laughs> Let's 
chamber for the master from the dawnful setting sun. Taught from all his wonders, love, and care. Then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done, the roll is called of yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called of yonder, 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 we'll be there. Amen. Amen. We'll say our prayers. We'll lift up our prayers on a few hymns of the faith. And we'll hear a student's message from God's Word, then we'll have communion. And go on to love and serve our Lord and Savior. So we've various folks have talked to Peggy Shane. She's on the men at rehab. Rehab rehab and isolation, of course, as she moves from rehab location to one more rehab location and then quarantine there before she comes home. Middle of December, which is coming right up. So pray she'll be home soon. Keep enjoy those nieces and their families, their husbands in particular, and our prayers. Appreciate your prayers. Um, the test results are in, but I go, go tomorrow to my urologist to hear how my prostate um, biopsy went. So keep in your prayers tomorrow morning, about 11.20. I'll hear the news, and then you can deal with it. Joe Ferry's in the hospital. Yeah, Joe. And then he was fine, but then he's not fine. So he called Sandra, Sandra this morning. They're going to do another EKG another, and another MRI, maybe. So she's kind of up in the air. She doesn't yeah, know. Yeah, we're glad to hear the first MRI. Is a no, no stroke. So we we'll pray that continues to be the news. So Let's find out what's up for Joe. Still uh, up in the air. Uh, Mary's daughter's going to have some surgery. Mm-hmm. Is that tomorrow? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, and Katie is still struggling with Crohn's disease. And Mary also <clears throat> wanted to mention people that are a lot of everybody really, they can't go home like normally, like a grandsons can't go home. Like kids are used to coming home for Christmas, and it's not happening right now. And so it's, uh, it's a big issue for uh, family time not being able to get together. So we keep all the families in our prayers. And, uh, we keep the homeless and the hungry in our prayers yeah. and, and those who are feeling isolated. And, and as Cindy said, more and more folks are just isolated because of the illness that's around. And, uh, I have um, Peggy, your test, Karen Greiner, her friend, and a uh, pain in my head. Maybe you could pray over that. Anybody else? Yeah, Amelia. When you have a happy moment, my grandson's wife is due within a couple of days and hope for the best. For new babies and their delivery. Yep, we pray for that. I, I have a new great, I have a new great, great niece oh, today. Oh. A great, great. That's, Makes me extra great. <laughs> I was good, then I was great, and now I'm really great. No, no great, just, just that. Congratulations, Amelia. Yes, congratulations, Amelia. And our families continue to grow. And it's, that's a good thing. Yeah, that's. Because she used to do everything. So, you know, she's really so praying <clears throat> for him in the nurse, rehab nursing home and for her. So. We will. Yep, that's. Thank you. That's all she wants. Yep. Right. And her <laughs> name is. Um, no, I just forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
and now she's in the hospital. Right, her name is Hill. Keep her in our prayers in the hospital with the COVID. <coughs> yeah, pray for our hospitals, the uh, nurses, doctors, and attendants, and healthcare workers. They're man, they're stretched thin right now. Hospitals are reaching maximum capacity. Jesus, pray for that. Stretch, stretch. Yeah, Grace, my daughter-in-law graduated from college. Yeah, our daughter-in-law is a nurse practitioner now. She graduated. Well, she's going to graduate. We're going virtual graduation next week from Deuville College up in Buffalo. Some of you know that. Yeah, I see some heads nodding. So she's now a nurse practitioner. I can call Frank and say, Frank, I got this pain in my back. What do you think? <laughs> oh, and she's a good kid. She'll, she'll tell me what she thinks. She's a great grandma, daughter in law. Other prayers? Wow, that's plenty. That's plenty. And God can handle each and every one of them. He will handle each and every one. Let's pray. Gracious God, we're thankful that all these prayers that we've mentioned and those that were on our minds as we put our feet on the floor this morning, as we rose up to, to come to this worship service, we are thankful that you have each and every one of these cares in your hands. And we pray specifically, Lord, for this illness that has gripped your entire creation. And Lord, we watch for ways that your glory will shine through. Thank you for those moments of glory that shine through at Michael's passing, that his, his brother was preparing a place for him once he was released from prison. And that was a wonderful thing to know that that prayer was answered, but what a better prayer yet to be answered that Michael knows about that now from his place uh, by Jesus' side in glory. For all those who've lost loved ones in this difficult pandemic time, couldn't be at a memorial service or to see their loved one or be with loved ones that were in that most terrible place of grieving, that we couldn't do the things we used to do. Lord, be with us. As you remind us that you're, you were there every moment for those folks who have passed. You're there for every person who is having a surgery or a treatment. You're already there, Lord, for those who are awaiting results from biopsies and tests and MRIs and EKGs. Lord, you're right there. Teach each of us to lean on you in those moments when we think they're the darkest, but you have light to bring to each of those situations. Lord, for the hungry, the homeless, the people on the edge, the marginalized, which we all feel that way now. And, and perhaps, Lord, that's where your glory will shine through. Each of us will receive new lessons about what it means to be needy, to need help, and watch for that help to arrive. Most of all, Lord, be with Cindy today as she brings your word to us, because that's where the light is, is, is hidden. It's there for the world to see if, if we'll just open our eyes and our ears and open our hearts to hear the message from your word. And then be with us as we celebrate your presence and your closeness in our lives as we celebrate communion, as we celebrate and we watch for the joy that is yet to come in each of our lives, in the lives of those that we love. Lord, thanks for a new birth, for these new babies that, that make us all smile, and, and, and we know they're welcomed into a, a world that is a wonderful place, but at the same time, Lord, be with those young parents that welcome these children. We can smile and know that You'll be with them. You'll help them each step of the way to raise that little child. Lord, it makes us smile to see people come back to Cloverleaf. We're so thankful. Be with those uh, Canadian friends who maybe can't come right away. We, we pray there might be a change in that, of course. But thanks for the safe travel you've given to our Cloverleaf loved ones who, who've come back and traveled to Come down here to the warm, sunny south, Lord. <laughs> Bring back some warm weather, Lord. Make their trip not in vain. Uh, we look forward to today being 60 or 70 degrees. Let's pray for that, too. And Lord, hear each of our silent prayers. They're so important.
These and all our prayers we ask in the precious name of Jesus, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, the Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Sing number 20. Maybe you've got a hymn that you need sung for your message, didn't you? What do you think about that? But we'll sing on it. We'll, we'll pray and sing about this sweet by and by in a land that's fairer than day. And by faith, we can see it far. Page 20. Let's remember Pearl Harbor Day tomorrow. Pearl Harbor Day yes. tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, Amelia. That's easy for us. Two doors across the street and up. We have a, a Pearl Harbor survivor. He turned 100 last summer. He's way, way born. He was at Pearl Harbor. Uh, yeah, he was a Pearl Harbor survivor. So. There's a land that is fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. For the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there. to your land, you restored the fortunes of Jacob, you forgave the iniquity of your people, you pardoned all their sin. Let me hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace to his people, to his faithful, to those who turn to him in their hearts. Surely his wisdom is at hand for those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Steadfast love and faithfulness will meet. Righteousness and peace will kiss each other. Faithfulness will spring up from the ground, and righteousness will look down from the sky. The Lord will give what is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness will go before him and will make a path for his steps. Father, be with me today that I speak only the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 
My scripture for you today is from 2 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 8. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hesitating hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. So also our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given to him. Paul was a great letter writer, wasn't he? Don't we all love to get mail? I do. I love a letter. It doesn't look like I owe somebody money. <laughs> and our house on top of a bookcase in a large shoebox is full of letters that Clark has written to our friend Michael in prison. Clark didn't tell you this, but he wrote to Michael every single day, every day, seven days a week. It was a morning ritual for him, along with his devotions. He would get up before me usually, and he'd be there, and he'd be writing to Michael, and he'd have his devotions open, and he'd share his devotions with Michael through his letters. And then Thanksgiving evening, Michael died. And like Clark says, we don't know the details. We got a text from his brother, and there we were in stunned disbelief. Let it soak in. Try to get our heads around it. The morning ritual suddenly, inexplicably changed. Now what do we do? The exact same words my sister used when my sister passed away a few weeks ago. She said to me, now what do we do? My relationship with Michael is a little different than Clark's. He made me crazy. He, just a, he was a, just a crazy maker for me. I'm the one I fretted over what's going to happen when he gets out. Where is this convicted felon going to live? Who will employ him? He needs a lot of supervision. I'd be searching the internet for solutions and making phone calls. If only his brother would have communicated with us. If only we had all communicated together. So much anxiety could have been avoided. Even Michael, incarcerated, could have experienced peace. Peace, the candle of today. Yes, we prayed. Yes, we saw progress in his spiritual growth, but it could have been so much more for all of us. Paul had to continuously communicate to the early Christians, reminding them of the peace that surpasses all understanding. Don't let that get by you today. Communicate. 
Katie. And Mary said this morning, families are separated. We have to communicate. We have to call, send cards, send letters. They don't know you're thinking of them if they don't hear it. In a phone call, or if they get a note from you, that person you've been estranged from for a while, or it's a good time to say, I'm sorry, I miss you, or whatever it is you need to say. Don't let that get by you today. And we can't find peace with each other until we find peace with God and find peace within. Amen. Cindy and Joy join me right up here at the table on each, each end. I had no experience with communion this way. But it, it reminds me that in the tr tradition I'm from, in the Presbyterian Church anyway, Baptist Church too, you know, the little trays that we pass, passed out, the little cups of grape juice and the little piece of bread. That's what we're going to do today. The interesting thing is we each are going to serve each other. And then I'll serve Joy and Cindy, and then they'll serve you, and I come back up front, and, and Cindy will serve me. And so we all serve each other. We're in this together. It kind of gives us that peace that Cindy was talking about in her message. Thank you, Cindy. That was good. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, after giving thanks, he took bread, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body and it's given for you. Every time you eat this bread, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after they finished the meal, he took the cup and he poured it full. He said, this is a promise, it's a covenant. Shed in my blood. It's for the forgiveness of the sins of the world or the sins of the many, as the scriptures say. And Jesus asks us to take and eat and drink, to do it in remembrance of him, and then feel strengthened and empowered to do kind of some of the things that Cindy had for us in her message today, to, to tell people that you love them. To ask someone to forgive you, to forgive someone who has, has done you wrong. Use the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is strong. Child of weakness, watch and pray. I am neither all and long. Jesus paid it all.
So there's two little seals on here. The first one is clear. And if you pull that clear one free, there's a little tiny wafer. Cindy found these online. Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want. And Jesus, Cindy found this. So what a great way to celebrate communion. The body of Christ and the cup of salvation. So take and eat the body of Christ. Given for you. And in the same way after they finish the meal. Feel that little silver foil away, maybe. I'm struggling right along here with you. If you just flick it a couple times, it loosens up. You can do it, guys. If you can't ask a woman. They can do anything men can do better. And then take and drink. Do this in remembrance of him. in front of the kitchen sink.